Good morning. Welcome to our CBCB Discipleship Center. Even though there's a long wait, and we are glad to have you worship God in person in our DC. No one can be a Christian alone. So you're in a community. We call Christian community. So after the worship, stay for a while to enjoy our coffee, to enjoy our fellowship one another. So I'm Pastor Chong this morning. Our elder Alex will translate for us. Jesus is the answer. Let's continue talking about our recent series on Jesus is the answer. We'll continue looking at 1 Corinthians chapter 13. We'll be looking at verses 4 to 7. This is what love is. This is part one of the message. This is the part one of the message. And this passage of the scripture is very beautiful. Verses 4 to 7. Let's read it, this together. One, two, three. Love is patient. Love is kind. It's the Lord envy. It's the Lord boast. It's not proud. It's the Lord dishonor others. It's not self seeking. It's not easily angry. It's keep no record of wrongs. Love does not delight in evil, but rejoice with the truth. Is always protects, always trust, always hopes, and always perseveres. We very often hear of this passage being read at wedding ceremonies because it's really a very beautiful passage. But please remember something. The love that is spoken here is not human love. Rather, it is God's love. Or agape love. This is God's nature. God is love. The Bible says that God is love. Because God's nature is love. You know that our God has different attributes. God is righteous. God is holy. And God is merciful. And God is present everywhere. And He is almighty. But the Bible only talks about two things. God is love and God is holy. God is love and God is holy. And these two attributes. And this is something that man does not possess. We do not have love. And we are not holy. But we, we only but reflect God's love and God's holiness before men. Just like what? Just like the moon. You know, the moon does not uh, shine its light on its own. But you see that the moon is very bright. You know, the light of the moon or the brightness of the moon is actually reflecting the light of the sun. And that is what our love is. And that is what our holiness is. After we put our trust in the Lord, we only but reflect God's love and God's holiness to other men. We're very familiar with the story of the Good Samaritan. There was an Israelite who was uh, beaten black and blue by thieves. And uh, the, the priest passed by and ignored him. The Levite passed by and he ignored him as well. There was only a stranger, a Samaritan actually, who saw him. And he was moved to pity. And he helped him. Put oil and wine on his wounds. And brought him to an inn to take care of him and pay for all his expenses. And then he said something else. Please continue taking care of him. When I come back, whatever may be owing, I will pay them all. And this story is very beautiful, right? So after 
telling about this story. Pastors and ministers will always uh, encourage us. But uh, we need to be like the good Samaritan. Take care of people who are in need. Who is your neighbor? Uh, anyone who is in need is your neighbor. And you need to take care of these people who are in need. And nothing wrong with that. But I want you to uh, take a deeper look at this. Please remember. Not one of us can be a good Samaritan Because this is not part of our nature And if you are able to do half of it Then you can consider to be the best person in the world No one is able to accomplish that Because our life isn't such kind of a life What do we do then? First you need to understand who you are. You are not the good Samaritan. Who are you? You are the Israelite who was beaten black and blue by thieves. And you need somebody to help you. You need a good Samaritan to help you. And who is that good Samaritan? Our Lord Jesus. It is our Lord Jesus. Only Him is the good Samaritan. We need to first experience His help, His healing, and His uh, grace. Because His uh, love has uh, moved you. That is only when you are able to love others. And so John said, We love because God first loved us. We love because God first loved us. It, uh, if it is not that God loved us, we will never ever be able to love the people around us. We are all selfish individuals. We only know how to love ourselves and not to love others. Until we experience the love of God on the cross. And because God loves moves me. Then I learned to forsake myself to, lo to love others. And in the passage we read today, verses 4 to 7 of chapter 13. And all that it talks about is not about human love, but rather God's love toward us. And we need to first to be first to be moved by God's love. So that uh, you will know how to use God's love to love the people around you. Verses 4 to 7. The structure is very unique. Structure. We call this the ABA structure. It talk, first talks about what love is. And then in the middle, it talks about what love is not. And then it ended by saying what love is. So we call this ABA. It used the structure of positive, negative, and then positive to talk about what love is. Lo what love, what is? It says that love is patient, love is kind. What love is not? Says love does not envy, does not boast, it is not proud, it is, does not dishonor others, it is not self seeking, it is not easily angered, it keeps no record of wrongs. Suddenly it says, what love is? It says love does not delight in evil but rejoices with the truth. It always protects, always trusts, always hopes, always perseveres. And if you were to combine verses 4 to 7, what love is? Talks about uh, it uh, seven points. What love is not? Mentions seven points. 
So in total, there are 14 points. We see therefore that love isn't easy. So, so I'm going to use two sermon messages to talk to you about what love is and what love is not. And today, we're going to first let you know what love is. From the positive aspect, we're going to show you what love is. First, first, it says that love is patient, and then it added that uh, love always perseveres. Love is patient. But then in the original text, these words, patient and persevere, are actually different. They've, uh, they have different meanings. Patience refers to long suffering in the circumstances. Like recently, circumstances are very bad. The economy is very poor. My neighbor is so, so noisy. And this is the being patient amidst the circumstance. And what about persevere? Perseverance actually refers to bearing with one another in our interpersonal relationship. You need to persevere uh, with uh, your husband, your spouse, your children. I don't, know. I don't know why my spouse lately has has been having a bad temper, so I'm going to be persevering. But then the original meaning is actually very similar. So patience or perseverance is actually a very important ingredient in love. We may say this. Without patience, there can be no love. And in the Bible, the basic meaning of patience is actually quite uh, passive or negative. Because it's only under bad circumstances or bad things that we need to be patient, not uh, in the midst of good things. So to be patient actually means to endure in the uncomfort uncomfortable and painful situations. You need, you need not uh, uh, be patient or persevere under a very comfortable circumstance. You are actually enjoying the circumstance. For example, you like, uh, you love steak. So you won't be saying that I'm persevering in eating this steak. No, 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 no. You enjoy the steak. You're, you are enjoying the steak. Many people know. I, as a person, I, I dislike spaghetti. But it's not that I don't eat at all. When I have no choice. I will eat. But I will never say that I enjoy spaghetti. I actually persevere in eating the spaghetti. Love is the love is per, love perseveres. And it's not a uh, long uh, long term uh, enjoyment. So and that is why some people translate this as Long suffering. You know the word patience? It's very amazing. Practically in every different uh, dialects or language, it actually expresses some kind of uh, pain or suffering. In Greek, and this word persevere. Is Hupomino means to uh, bear up under. 
to bear up under a certain kind of pressure. So, hupomeno actually means suffering. And in the Chinese, the word for patience or to persevere, run, means a knife uh, being pierced through the heart. And of course, it's something that's very painful. For the uh, Hokkien. And there is a word that's very uh, interesting. Love, love. love. L O V E, love. We say this as Tia. But very amazingly, though. If I'm experiencing pain, I also use the same, uh, I say the same thing, it's Tia. So they both sound the same. One is uh, tia, love, and which is uh, the other one is ya tia, which is very painful. Tia, is ya tia. So tia is uh, very painful. So when you love a person, you, you would be willing to be patient uh, for the other person, and that brings you pain. But what's so amazing? Whenever you have love for another person, when you are being patient with him or her, your words will not uh, express any kind of complaint. But if you don't love the person, and uh, you would be angry as you persevere with that person. I believe that our Lord Jesus is the best example. The life and the character of uh, Jesus expresses or exhibits this kind of love. Or rather, patience uh, before Jesus was uh, crucified on the cross. The Bible says that he was led like a lamb to the slaughter. But then he didn't even say a, a word of complaint or grumbling. On one hand, uh, people were using their words to insult him, to criticize him. In fact, they even uh, spat on him. But Jesus didn't say a word. Such kind of patience is something that you won't find in the world. The most is that we are able to uh, be patient with the people that we love. We will never ever be able to be patient toward people who don't treat us well. And if you have uh, paid attention to some news from mainland China these days, and in the coffee shops, uh, there had been a, a number of uh, disputes. It's usually the uh, customer and the, uh, perhaps uh, one of the um, food server that has happened uh, some conflict. And one time, because a person, a customer, waited for too long. So the two of them were. Uh, arguing and it argued to such a point that the food server actually uh, threw the coffee in the face of uh, this customer because pressure might have been too great and one time it's, it was even more serious the two of them were arguing and the customer took out the uh, his or her cell phone to uh, take a video. Wow, and the food server became so angry and uh, grabbed the cell phone of the customer and the two of them had a fist fight. And this world, we are living in a very uh, uh, pressure filled environment. Small things uh, can uh, actually spark uh, something in our hearts. And as a result, uh, it results to fighting. Just like a volcano suddenly erupting. Love is the long suffering. Love is not something that's uh, long happy. 
And nothing wrong with being happy. We, lo- we love and we enjoy uh, being with uh, our good friends, having coffee, enjoying one another. In such kind of circumstance, we don't need to be patient. But love, the nature of love is patience. How can we be patient? A person. Only a person with hope, uh, faith, hope, and love can uh, be patient with another person. If you believe in God, no matter how great a difficulty may be before us, you are able to face it. Because you have faith in God. And if you have love for God, you know that God loves you. You know one thing. The circumstance that I'm in, all the things that I'm experiencing, and were allowed by God. And although I may not understand it now, but I know this is going to be something that's beneficial for me. So you are able to be patient. And if you have hope in God, you know what I am facing right now, God will surely help me. And if you have hope, you are able to continue to be patient. There was a woman spent six months to control her own diet. Every day she was exercising and she lost 30 pounds. You know why? You know why? Because she had a hope. Because after six months she was going to get married. She wanted that on her wedding day she would be wearing this very beautiful uh, wedding gown because of this hope. Within a span of three months, she was able to lose 30 pounds. You know how important hope is. I don't know whether she uh, gained her weight back after the wedding. But love is patient. Long suffer. Love is long suffering. Second thing, it says love is kind. And if you say that to persevere, to be patient is uh, on the negative side. And uh, to be kind is very positive. And this is not easy, right? Being able to uh, be patient with your spouse or your husband is no longer easy. My spouse is very difficult to serve. I've already persevered with him for 30, 40 years. And not only should you persevere with him, you need to be kind toward him. Love is Kind. Because love is kind. Now, this is even more difficult. Because kindness in itself is an action. Because this is something that you do for another person. This world. It is a tooth for tooth world. You treat me well and I treat you well. If you don't treat me well, why should I treat you well? Because this is our natural response. And so kindness is not our nature. But vengeance is our nature. But God says no. Love is Kind. Love is kind. God's character is goodness. It is a life of kindness. And love is kind. But please remember, love does not delight in evil. So we treat people well, that doesn't mean that we are not sensitive towards sin. Hebrews says something. 
上帝疼咱 ，God loves us， 伊管教咱 ，and so he disciplines those he loves。我当你疼一个人嘅时 ，so when you love a person， 不代表未管教 ，it doesn't mean that you don't discipline。对我讲，对对人有温柔开嘅时阵 ，when I say that、uh, you are to be kind toward others， 不代表当放纵这个人做一切随便嘅代志 ，it doesn't mean that you allow the person to indulge or to tolerate his wrongdoing。两个人有几句话呀？ The Chinese have a saying. 一个叫做“慈母多败儿”。A loving mother ruins her children. 意思讲我这个真真有疼什么老母哦。In other words, what the, it's this is saying is that a person or a mother who loves her children too much. 有时候好易见啊，受个诚意惊了啦。Sometimes they、uh, spoil their children. 无管教易见啊啦啦。They don't.、Uh, Discipline the children. And as a result, it brings harm to the children. Not necessarily a loving mother. A loving father would be likewise. It's not that we don't love our children. But love must be done within the sphere of truth. I always say, babies, babies are like angels, except they're without wings. With a, a pair of wings, then they would really like be like an angel. Every baby, when they were born, they really are so lovable. We always say they're so cute. But please remember, this angel. One day, perhaps they will. It will become a、uh, demon. Look at this. Look at the murderers in the world. Look at the rapists. When they were born, every one of them were like angels. Why did they become like demons? And one of the most important reason, because the parents perhaps did not discipline them. Yeah, just a minute, just a minute. They let them do as they please. How can they go? Let me tell you. We who are parents, especially the young parents amongst us. And if your children are still under your care, under your discipline. You should not、uh, let them do as they please. Let me tell you. If you have never said the word N O to your no or no to your children, there's only two. There are only two reasons. Number one, your child is really like an angel. That you don't need to say no to your child. Second, you are. Maybe spoiling your child. You're not loving your child. You're actually destroying him. You're very、uh, vicious、uh, toward your children. Because you see that the future of your child is going to lead to destruction, and you just let him do it. May God help us. If one day. You hear of someone say that child.、Uh, there's no one disciplining that child. You think about it. First, if、uh, this person is talking about my child, and if that is true, is it true or not? If、uh, it is untrue, then you just ignore the person. But if what the person said is true, then you shouldn't be angry at your child. You ask yourself. Somebody is saying that my child isn't being disciplined. This is my child. And it's my child. Who is not disciplining him? And who is not disciplining him? It's me. Then you need to repent. May God help us. Love is kind. But within kindness, there is God's righteousness within. Love is kind. And our Lord Jesus is our best example. When he was crucified on the cross, not only was he patient, isn't it that we said a while ago that he didn't say a word? But while he was hanging on the cross, he started to talk. And the first word he said, 
Father, forgive them for they do not know what they do. Why did Jesus pray in this manner? There's only one reason. Because he was moved to pity. And in the four Gospels, every time, every occasion wherein we see Jesus giving his uh, kindness toward others, he always said, Jesus was moved to pity. When he, when he saw the person stricken with leprosy, he was moved to pity. And he touched the person. And when he saw a person who was born blind, he was moved to pity. And he used his own hands to touch that person's eyes. And when he saw the funeral of a, uh, the, a widow's son, the widow was crying so hard. And the Bible says, Jesus was moved to pity. And he raised that the widow's son to life again. May the Lord help us. That God's love will always be moving in our hearts, that our hearts may be moved. 37 years ago when I came to the Philippines used to be that uh, when I uh, see uh, these uh, little children knocking on my car window I couldn't stand it I would open my roll down my window and give them some coins but I don't know why I uh, don't even realize uh, after uh, some period of time I've been living in the Philippines for too long I've seen too much suddenly when people knock on my car's window I don't even look at them I just waved, uh, waved them away one day suddenly I felt uh, I said to myself why have I become like this and I realized that it was some people who told me that these are like scams. I've seen too much. And then I asked myself, is it really so? Or is it because I've been numb? My kindness is gone. So I asked God to forgive me. But I know. I said, Lord, every time when I knock on my car window, move my heart. And then I'll help them. And if you don't move my heart, perhaps you're not moving me to help them. May God help us. This world, there are a lot of lawless things. May God help us. Love is kind. Love is kind. Third, love does not delight in evil but rejoices with the truth. What does it mean to delight? That you uh, delight in everything. Let me ask you, what do you delight in? Some people the delight in food. When they see food, they're so happy. When, whereas some people, they delight in sports. They play, when they play basketball, they, it makes them very happy. And some people, they find delight in traveling. Long weekend, praise God, let's go. Long weekend, praise God, let's go. And I don't know what you delight in in your heart. Everyone delights in different things. But Paul said, I delight in the truth. Love does not delight in evil but rejoices with the truth. When truth is being exalted, then my heart is happy. In our world today, 
It's a uh, culture that we see is becoming more and more anti-truth. And I don't know whether you feel sad when you see these things happening. Paris Olympic in France just uh, ended. And I don't know what sort of feelings you had. Especially during the opening ceremony. And France had this, uh, this uh, a culture of uh, freedom and openness and uh, inclusivity as their theme. And France had yeah, they uh, show this uh, opening ceremony with this uh, uh, seemingly uh, a replica of the Lord's Supper. But Jesus wasn't there. And who replaced Jesus? You know who that uh, person in the middle is? A Greek god of wine. And he used this to replace Jesus. And uh, all the people around her, around them, around him or her, uh, they're all L- LGBTQs. Please remember. And Olympic is something that's uh, a global thing. It isn't uh, just simply for one nation or country. But rather, it is something that's being held for the whole world. The world has turned into such kind of a very frightening thing. But you don't see it strange. You know, in our world today, your children, your grandchildren, they're going to be the people who will be very accepting of homosexuality. They will not think that it is anything wrong. Because after the postmodern era, people no longer are accept what absolute truth is. Rather, what people will put emphasis on is their personal rights. Now, we do not discriminate against any kind of sinners. Because everyone, all of us are sinners. And it doesn't mean that because I didn't commit this sin, that I don't commit any other sin. We are all sinners. And sinners need to repent. But we cannot continue living in sin. But this world is becoming more and more or a totally different world. They are going more and more against the truth. Christians, there is no Christian who should be like a Mr. Good, like uh, everything's okay with you. Sometimes we need to say no to people. There are things that we need to be not be contentious with others. Because our, our question, our problem, our question would be where are we going to travel? To? What food are we going to eat? These kind of things, we need not be contentious because there's nothing to do with the truth. But there are things in which you need to have your own stand. No one should be able to lead their lives uh, just trying to please others. If uh, you love pleasing people, you are a person who's not going to be respected. Please remember, a person who uh, seeks to please others all their lives, people will not respect you in their hearts. That this person has no principle, no stand. May God help us. Let us not be such kind of a person. And Proverbs has this word to say. 
Better is open rebuke than hidden love. Sometimes we need to be bold to say no to people. Sometimes being a pastor is really very difficult. Sometimes you need to be a bad person. Actually, me as a person, if you know me, uh, in English, I say that uh, I am a person who's not confrontational. My daughter told me, said, uh, Papa, you are an introvert. And you may say that, uh, well, Pastor, you talk all day long. Uh, are you sure you're an introvert? Well, I have to speak because I am a preacher. You, can, you know, I can sit in my office for a few hours uh, without talking to anyone. And the best thing is that nobody comes to bother me. Just like me. I am a person who does not like confrontations. But many times, in my position, it is unavoidable that I should speak up. Sometimes I see something wrong being done. Usually, I wouldn't immediately confront the person. We all learn from mistakes. Because we all learn from mistakes. But when I see that time again, the person repeats the same mistake again and again, then I wouldn't be too polite. I would uh, confront the person. But in this past 30 or so years, I have never driven any coworker out. I always give the coworker an opportunity to repent. And if people who leave, they leave on their own accord. And they go out without repentance. And not one of them had resulted to anything good. Yes, I've really seen it. And they don't have a few good future. God has kindness, and yet God is not uh, haphazard. Many times, may God help us. Why do I need to deal with such kind of issues? Because in my heart, I have this concept. When God isn't uh, present with the church, that is when the church fails. When God is present, is with the church, that is when the church grows. Why is it that uh, God is not present with the church? Because if the church does not deal with anything that's uh, sinful or wrong in the church, and if I do not know about it, I can do nothing. I won't do anything. But if I know something, I will surely have to deal with it. You won't believe that uh, what I have done. May God help us. When I read about uh, Jesus performing the miracle of uh, distributing the five uh, loaves of bread and two pieces of fish, I suddenly discovered something. When I offered this bread and this fish into the hands of Jesus, Jesus is able to feed 5,000. Imagine this were the food of a little boy. And this is God's blessing. And if there is God's blessing, if there is God's blessing, you wouldn't imagine. But when God departs from the church, our loss is something that would be unimaginable. So may God help us. So may God help us. Love is something that's very special. We only... Uh, the light in uh, 
uh, we don't delight in evil, but we delight rejoice in the truth. And the fourth thing, love always protects, always trusts, always hopes, always perseveres. And this uh, word persevered, I already explained this a while ago. So I only talk about three things. Love always protects, always trusts, always hopes. Always protects. What does it mean to protect? Pro- to protect means to have confidentiality, to shield, to quietly protect. Love has the power to uh, protect. And to uh, protect to uh, cover. And of course, it doesn't include sin. Because sin is not within the sphere of love. So Proverbs has this word. Hatred stirs up conflict, but love covers all wrongs. Love and hatred are two different, uh, very powerful powers. Let me ask you, your life, uh, what, uh, which power is being led, which, uh, your life is being led by which power? Is it by love? Or are you being led by hatred? You know what? When you are being led by hatred, in your eyes, Whatever the other person is doing is always wrong. Whatever he says is always wrong. So you become angrier and angrier toward the other person. On the other hand, if you allow love to lead you, you always allow the other person a chance. And so the other person will have the uh, space to exist in your presence. Because you have hope in that person. For example, this person, in the office, is, um, he probably isn't doing, performing very well. And if you hate that person, you drive him away. But you love the person, then you give the person a chance. You ask the person, what is the reason? So that this person can continue to be present or exist. Perhaps he may need training. So you send a person to training. So when you love a person, you allow the person to continue to exist. Jesus had 12 disciples, right? And uh, Judas betrayed the Lord Jesus. Have, have you noticed that in the four Gospels, Jesus time and again gave Judas many uh, opportunities he chose Judas to be one of his apostles. And Judas was in charge of the money. And uh, John said that uh, Judas always helped himself with the money. And so he said Judas was a thief. Let me ask you. John knew about it. Would Jesus know about it or not? And if Jesus didn't know about it, then Jesus is not Jesus. But, strangely enough, Jesus never said a word. And on the last night, uh, on the, during the Last Supper, Jesus openly said, and to whom I will give this cup, uh, this person is going to be the one to betray me. So he reminded uh, Judas that I know about it. But yet, Judas continued to go out and to betray Jesus. When Jesus brought people to uh, arrest Jesus, 
Jesus gave him a last opportunity. Are you going to betray the Son of Man with a kiss? And he kissed Jesus as well. So you see that Jesus gave Judas the opportunity time and again to repent. But such a pity. Judas did not grab hold of the opportunities. And as a result, he lost such great a salvation. But love uh, protects all things. And St. Augustine said, Love is a force that is always victorious. As we grow older, I believe that you will understand these words even more because you're getting along in age. You've uh, been, uh, you've known a lot of people. And so you'll understand that uh, if you have loved, you are able to forgive the wrongs of many people. Love allows you to have that power. It says love always trusts. Love always trusts doesn't mean that you believe everything. Because in Proverbs 14, verse 15, it says the simple believe anything, but the prudent give thought to their steps. You don't believe anything. But what he is saying is that uh, love is very special. You have trust, you have hope in people. I believe that we who are parents will understand this. Because we love our children. So we always believe in our children. We believe that they are going to change in the future. The story of the prodigal son. Why was the father of the prodigal son waiting every day for his son to come home? Because he believed that his son will surely repent and he will turn back. The prodigal son is going to turn around and he's going to come home. What about the prodigal son's uh, brother? No. The brother treated his uh, brother, his younger brother as if he was dead. And so when the prodigal son came home, and uh, when this elder brother heard that his father was so happy and is throwing a celebration, he was so furious. Because he already had lost his love for his brother. And Jesus helped 12 disciples. Peter. Peter. And he was the uh, eldest among them. He was a big brother. And uh, Jesus never lost his trust in Judas. Peter. Peter. Because he had the uh, belief, he had trust in Peter. Because first time that uh, Jesus saw Peter, he said, you are Simon, son of John. You will be called Cephas. You are, but you will be. You are, but you will be. This is Simon. You are Simon. But, but you will be. You will be. You will be called Cephas. You're going to be a rock. Stone. And Peter, the Jesus had trust in Peter. And in the future, you're going to be. A, uh, the rock of the church. Yet this rock time and again disappointed Jesus. One day he said that uh, Jesus, uh, or rather Peter confessed that you are the son of God. Very good, very good. And Jesus said very good. And then Jesus said that I'm going to be crucified on the cross and on the third day I will be raised to life again. Peter immediately said Lord, this should not be. And so the Lord uh, Jesus rebuked him saying, Satan, get thee behind me. And this rock became Satan. He wanted to uh, hinder 
Jesus from going to the cross at one time. Someone asked Peter a question. Does your teacher pay the temple tax? He didn't even ask Jesus about it. Yes. Immediately he responded saying yes. And then Peter Rather, Jesus asked Peter a question. Peter, let me ask you a question. From whom do the kings of the uh, of this world uh, collect taxes? Is it from uh, their people, from his people, or from his sons? And of course, from his people, his subjects. And so Jesus said, then I don't need to be paying the temple tax, right? Because the temple belongs to my father. So I don't need to pay taxes, the temple tax. But then you've already said it. So go and fish. The first fish that you pick, uh, open its mouth and you will find a coin in there and use that coin to pay the temple tax. And Peter was very careless with his words. And on that night that uh, Jesus was crucified, today I I'm going to be arrested. And all of you will desert me. And Peter said, No. No. If, even if everyone leaves, I will never leave you. I will even die with you. No. Jesus said, No. Today, this evening, you're going to deny me three times. No, 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 no. And he said, no, no, no. That's not going to happen. And as a result, three times, Peter denied Jesus. And this was Peter. But when Jesus rose again from the dead, he intentionally said something. He actually said that, uh, uh, tell, uh, tell the disciples and Peter about uh, me rising from the dead. Disciple and Peter. Disciples and Peter. Peter, Peter, Peter. He was very intentional in mentioning Peter. And well, he could actually say that uh, tell the disciples. Because Peter was one of the disciples. Disciple and Peter. But uh, then Jesus said, Tell the disciples and Peter. He was afraid that Peter wouldn't turn back. And Peter was such kind of a person. Time and again he failed. But Peter, or rather Jesus, never forsook Peter. So so the last time, he asked Peter three questions. Do you love me? Three times he asked Peter the same question. Do you love me? Do you love me? Do you love me? Do you love me? And do you love me? Yes, yes, yes. And Peter replied, yes, yes, and yes. He once again entrusted the work of the church, the work of the gospel into the hands of Peter. For love bears all things. Church. Do you believe the person that you love? Love always hopes. The Chinese have a saying. There is no grief greater than a dying heart. I mean, when a person's heart toward another person is already dead, then he won't do anything. You've lost hope for that person. So church, hope is very important. You need to have hope in your life. But the nature or the essence of uh, love is hope. When you have love for a person, then hope will always be present. When you say that I have no hope in that person anymore, meaning to say that you feel no love for that person anymore, so I say, if husbands and wives quarrel, and although it may not be something good, but then the marriage will still have hope. Because you're willing to 
fight, you're willing to quarrel. So when you have a quarrel, when you have an argument, you actually are able to say anything. Because if you're not having an argument, you may not be willing to say anything. Once you start having an argument, then everything comes out. You're no longer afraid. So having an argument may not necessarily be something but, bad. But, 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 but you don't know how to fight a good fight. You need, you need to know how to fight a good fight. It's not just uh, having any kind of fight. If one day that you no longer fight and you ask that uh, why don't we fight anymore? Why do you fight? There's no more hope. And there's no more hope. Nothing. Nothing left. And such kind of a marriage is really lost. Because you no longer have any hope. Because there's no longer love. So remember. Without hope, there is no longer any goal or objective. Without hope, there is no more strength. Without hope, there is no improvement. And without the hope to improve, there is no longer any purpose in life. So you see how important hope is. My elder, eldest brother passed away two years ago. But 27 years ago, the doctors had already given my brother only a week to live. But then he had an extra 27 years. You know why? You know why? Because in his heart, he had hope. He wanted to see his uh, son born. He wanted to see his son graduate from uh, university. And he wanted to see his son have his own family. 27 years. And he saw all this with his own eyes. Every time I would visit Hong Kong, he would tell me, and he would always tell me that uh, all these uh, 20 plus years that I've got, these are all bonus. May God help us. We need to have hope. If you have hope, then you will improve. This world, evidently, this is a world filled with a lot of problems, a lot of troubles, and suffering. And this world is a world that is uh, walking farther and farther away from God. Science continues to improve. Medicine uh, is continuing to improve. Technology continues to improve. But the moral standards of people are getting lower and lower. So one is going upwards, the other one is going downwards. So nothing really strange about it. Because this is the last days. And it is a time when the world is going to be more and more corrupt. And that is when Jesus is coming again. And the, world, the, the church exists in this world. We are the light of the world, the salt of the earth. And the message of the cross is the message that this world, world direly needs because of the cross. Because the cross is the love of God. It is not the love of God. And the church exists is to proclaim the love of God. This world is going to be more and more corrupt. But please uh, believe me, one day, this world is going to be uh, more and more advanced. Because the church will continue to do its work in this world. And if the lives of people need to be changed, there's only the cross that can change the world. So church, 
Our mission is very simple. That is to proclaim the message of the cross to this world. Before Jesus comes again, we can save those people who are willing to believe. And that all begins with us. May our lives, uh, may they see uh, the, God, the love of God through our lives. That we may proclaim the love of God. Let's pray. Our Heavenly Father, we thank you so much uh, for this uh, wonderful, wonderful message from your word, Lord. We thank you, Father, that you are indeed uh, love, for God is love. We thank you that because of your love, Father, that it is only because that you loved us that we know what love is and we are able to love others. Father, grant us the capacity, the strength to be able to love others just as you have loved us, that we may proclaim this wonderful message of love to a world that is in darkness, a world that is lost. Father, and may your love fill this world that people are going to turn to you, that lives are going to be changed, marriages, families, our communities and our cities are going to see transformation because of this great love of yours that flows out through our lives, Father. So continue to work in our lives, continue to touch us, continue to move in our hearts. May we continue to be sensitive to your love, Father, so that uh, your love will truly shine through our lives. Thank you, Lord. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. 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 Thank you very much. Let's choose the things you like. We sing a message. God, we sing a song to respond to the message this morning. This is a message that's really good. Hear, 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 the, the, the lyric is a four to seven. Love is kind, love is patient, something like this. That's what I tell you. Sing, see, we learn this song. This as we sing, see, her. Tears is a bit. We are right. Let's sing this song. The essentials of love. Let's sing. Let's sing. We sing Christ. I see Hangzhou Yan Na Yo Yo and Chi. I May the grace of the Lord Jesus and the love of God 
and the fellowship of the Holy Spirit be with you. Let the love of God to overthrow your light. Your light will represent the God's love in this world. You are the salt and the light in this world. God bless you in the name of the Father, in the name of the Son, in the name of the Holy Spirit. Let the God people say, Amen, amen and Amen and Amen. God bless you. You can take a seat. See you on next Sunday. Let's talk about what is not love. See you next Sunday. God bless you.